Hey guys, welcome back to another reading of The Haunted, and today's chapter is called The Demon Stirs. In the days following Father O'Reilly's refusal to visit the Smurl home and the depressing impact this refusal had on the family, the Smurls discovered just how accurate Ed Warren had been about their being involved in a war. A discovery. After school one day, Dawn came home to find her makeup missing from her bureau. This was typical of events around the house lately, the spirits vanishing many of the family's belongings. On this particular afternoon, however, Dawn did not react in the way an average 16-year-old would when presented with evidence of demons. Instead, she got angry. She even joked about it. I know why you took my makeup, she shouted to the spirits she felt in the room. It's because you're ugly and your mommy dresses you funny. Janet, passing by her daughter's bedroom, heard this and began laughing. She stopped laughing when the violent banging began inside the walls. Now Janet became apprehensive. Had Dawn made the demon so angry that it would hurt her? Janet had promised herself that the next time the wall poundings began, she would run and get a tape recorder, which she did now. Kneeling by the knocking, Janet started the tape recorder and then said, I want to communicate with you. Mother, Dawn whispered, addressing the demon again. Janet said, I want you to knock once for yes and twice for no. Do you understand? Dawn went over and sat on the bed, both afraid and fascinated. Do you understand? Janet repeated to the demon, nothing. Janet checked the tape recorder and then proceeded to have a most curious conversation. Are you here to harm us? Nothing. It's not going to talk to us, Dawn said. Are you here to harm us? Janet repeated. This time there came a knock, a single knock. The answer was yes. The demon was here to harm them. Janet gasped. Are you here to harm me? Janet asked, wanting to make sure that the first knock had indeed been a re in response to her question. Another single knock. Yes. Janet knew that her next question might cause the demon to go berserk. She would introduce into the conversation the name of the being that had driven Satan from heaven, God himself. Janet said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? The response was immediate and furious. The banging became so loud and intense that Janet was pushed back from the wall, kicking over the tape recorder as she was flung over it. Dawn buried her face in the pillow, trying to shield her ears from the overwhelming rapping. Stop! Stop! Janet called out to the demon. Three or four minutes later, the banging stopped. Janet's first move was to write the recorder, rewind the tape, and play it back to see if the entire episode had been recorded. Thankfully, it had been. She went over and sat on the bed next to Dawn, sliding her arm around her. Why didn't you run out of the room, honey? I know you were scared. Dawn grinned. I wanted to be here in case I needed to protect you. Janet had never been prouder of her daughter than at that moment. Bathing trouble. Finished with her whole housework for the day, Janet Smurl was taking a bath. She'd just gotten settled in the tub, lathering herself with Dove, when suddenly she felt her eyes on her. She had never felt quite so naked or vulnerable. She continued with her bath, <clears throat> soaping her face gently and rinsing off the soap right away. Then the whistling began. It was the kind of lascivious whistling women had to endure around groups of drunken men filled with both innuendo and threat. Janet began screaming. Jack, reading the paper downstairs, ran up the stairs two at a time. He flung back the bathroom door and came in to find Janet crouched in the corner of the tub, trembling. It's in here, she said. Then she told him about the whistling. Please stay w here with me, Jack, please. Don't worry, Jack said. Across from the bathroom door was a crucifix he'd used to keep the hallway safe. He pushed the door wide open now so that Janet could see the cross. He sat in there with her until she finished her bath. As she toweled off, Janet said dejectedly, Now it's getting so bad, we need a bodyguard to take a bath. Strange women, exhausted from a long day at work and from the tension that filled the house, Jack fell asleep one Friday night earlier than usual. Around 2 a.m., he was awakened by the sounds of people talking. He thought it might be the twins, but at 2 a.m.? 
Then he looked up and saw two women in the room. One appeared to be in her early 40s, the other around 20. They wore old-fashioned bonnets and long dresses that cast an eerie sheen similar to that of the glowing TV set. Oddly, their hair had no exact color. Then they were gone, instantly. In the morning, Jack told Janet about the peculiar apparition. They both agreed that it could well have been a dream brought on by the stress the family was under. That night, however, the same two women reappeared. Jack watched them as they stood in the shadowy corner of the bedroom. He tried to wake Janet, but couldn't. By now, he knew that she was experiencing the psychic sleep that allowed the demon to appear to one person without having the other person awaken to corroborate the appearance. This night, the women began whispering to each other. Then the younger one turned to Jack and smiled. Her lips curled sarcastically. He tried to cry out, but found he had no voice. He tried to move off the bed, but found he was paralyzed. He tried to wake Janet again, but to no avail. He lay and watched them whisper and sneer at him. Then they eased back into the closet from where they'd come and disappeared. Even three full days and nights later, Jack still shuddered invo involuntarily whenever he thought of the two women and their strangely threatening presence. That is so creepy, you guys. This book just keeps getting more and more intense. I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter, and I will see you in my next video for the next chapter. Bye, guys.